Hey guys, Rivers here with Tech Connect, and today I want to show you how to upgrade the SSD in the Samsung Galaxy Book Pro. We're going to go to a one terabyte hard drive that's much faster. In fact, it can boot in under nine seconds. And I'm going to skip all the long video intro, and we're going to go right to the upgrade. So uh, hit the like and subscribe button for that, and let's go ahead and start this upgrade. So we're going to use Samsung's Galaxy Book Pro. This is a very compact, lightweight laptop, sort of like Apple's M1 MacBook Pro, but this guy is upgradable where the Apple is not. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is finish your Windows installation, run all of the Windows updates, and install any apps that you wanna have on here so that it's ready for imaging the SSD. Now, let's take a look at all the hardware I used for this install. So I went with the Samsung 980 SSD, I've got an external NVMe to USB 3.1 enclosure and an extra fine tip screwdriver. You might also want a screwdriver with a Torx head depending on your laptop. I'll have a link to all of this hardware in the description down below. I picked the Samsung drive because it has some amazing performance and I'll show you tests of that in the end of this video, but it will speed your whole laptop up. Plus, when you use a Samsung drive, you can use Samsung's image migration software to copy your existing drive to your new drive, and it's free. So this enclosure that I'm using right here works for M.2 NVMe drives only. There's also an M.2 SATA drive, which is a cheaper, slower drive, but my enclosure only works for one type, but I'll have a link to an enclosure that works for both types of drives in the description down below. Once you have your drive installed in the enclosure, you have one more step to go before you can start imaging your old hard drive to it. So you'll notice when you first connect the drive to Windows, it does not show up in my computer. First you need to go to the start menu, right click and choose disk management. Now in disk management, this is where you'll tell Windows that it has a drive connected. So be sure and choose GPT on here. That's the more uh, robust format. Then the drive will show up down below. Right click that drive, make sure it's the correct drive and choose new simple volume. Now all you need to do is follow this wizard, choosing next, choose the complete amount of disk space, and this will format your drive. Now you are ready to go for the next step. Now you're ready to clone your drive. So here, since this is a Samsung drive, I Google searched Samsung data migration software, and it took me to right to their website where you can download the data migration tool. And this only works on Samsung drives. So if you buy a different brand, you're gonna need to get a different data migration package. A couple other disk cloning packages I recommend are Clonezilla, which is free, and Peregrine Disk Migration Software, which I've been using for a long time. I got it when it was $20, now it's $70, but if you have a lot of drives to clone, it's well worth it. I will add links to some of the cloning software that I recommend in the video description down below. Anyhow, for this upgrade, we're gonna use the Samsung Data Migration Software. It's very easy to use. At the top, you just choose the source drive, which is the drive built into the laptop, and at the bottom you choose the destination drive, which is the external drive, and then you just hit start. It will copy all the partitions and everything, a mirror image of the existing drive for you. Once the imaging is complete, disconnect the drive and power off the computer. I accidentally rebooted the computer with the drive still connected, and I think it corrupted the drive because it would not boot and I had to re-image the drive for it to work. Anyways, now it's time to swap out the drive. Let me show you how to do it on this notebook. So the trick to removing the back on this notebook and many others is to remove the little rubber feet. Luckily this one is really easy, like there's a little bit of sticky stuff on there and then it has kind of a molding in the back that fits into the slot, so it's really easy. And then underneath that is just regular screws, but you do need a precision small screwdriver. Uh, I'll link to some in the description. But anyways, uh, getting the back plate off is not bad. Uh, what I ended up doing, instead of sticking something under that really small crack, is just slightly bending the edge here. That gave me the uh, a crack that I needed just to get my nails in there, and then just carefully go around the outside and pry it loose. Once inside, we can see that the SSD is your standard off-the-shelf NVMe SSD, so it's fully upgradable, which is awesome news. Now, the DRAM in here is not upgradable. That's soldered onto the motherboard, so that is a little bit of a letdown, but still, the SSD is the biggest performance uh, boost that you're gonna get on the system, probably better than even upgrading the RAM, so. Uh, it's definitely nice to see, and it's way better than a lot of Macs where you can't upgrade anything, even the SSD or the DRAM. So to remove the SSD, there's just one screw right here at the back, and uh, then it just slides back away from the little mounting socket. Once you have the old drive out, take the freshly imaged drive and put it in its place. 
then you'll secure that screw in the back. And at this point, you might want to leave the cover off and try booting it just to make sure everything's okay before you go to the trouble to put the cover back on. So before we boot the computer for the first time, we're going to want to go into the BIOS. So when you power on, hit F2 a bunch of times until it gets to the BIOS. And here we can see it recognizes the new Samsung 980 hard drive, so we're good there. So what we're going to want to do is go ahead and hit the Save button, save and confirm that we are saving the BIOS so it knows the drive is there, and now we're ready to boot. If all goes well, you should boot into Windows Lightning Fast and it should look the same as before. Let's go ahead and test out the boot time with the new SSD installed. So hit the power button here, we're at 1 second, 2 second, 3 second, boot screen, and we are at the lock screen at 7 seconds, and we're in with under 9 seconds. That is amazing. So that was an amazing boot time, and this is the Samsung 980. There's also a 980 Pro, which is even faster, but I thought it was overkill for this laptop. And finally, take your old hard drive, put it back in the box that the new drive came in, seal it back up, and label it that it's your old hard drive. That way you'll always have a backup of the original machine in case you ever need it. And finally, I ran a couple benchmarks on the old hard drive and the new hard drive to compare the read and write speeds and give you an idea of the kind of performance gains we'll see. So I ran Crystal Disk Mark to get the read and write speeds, and you can see here that the read speed came in almost a third faster, and the write speed even came in about twice as fast up on these top benchmarks. And then some of the random read and write tests came in about 10 to 15% better, so still a nice improvement with the new drive. And then next, with the 256 gigabyte test, we saw the lead expand even larger, especially with the write times on the new drive. So it looks to me that the drive upgrade is well worth it for the higher overall system performance, as well as the larger storage space on the laptop. All right, so my final thoughts on the Samsung Galaxy Book Pro are it is a great little laptop. I love the OLED screen, it looks so good and the new hard drive upgrade makes it even faster. Plus, the coolest thing is having that old hard drive as a backup, so if anything ever happens to the drive on this guy, you can pop that old drive back in, just uh, re-image it back to the new drive or another drive, and you've got a second chance. I'll have links to the Galaxy Book Pro and everything in the video in the description below, and be sure and hit that like and subscribe button if you, this video helped you out. Thanks again for watching, and as always, aloha.